Hi, my name is Colin Matthews and we're here at Kula Yoga Studios in Toronto and we're here to talk about top yoga poses for cyclists. Whether you're riding a Century, a Brevet, or maybe even the hair shirt, there's a good chance you're going to experience some discomfort in your neck, shoulders, and upper back spending this much time in the saddle. These are my top five poses to help stretch and open your upper body, back, shoulders, and neck. So the first one we're going to do is called L Hang at the Wall. For this one, you're going to want to turn, bring your hands onto the wall, either high or if you're more mobile, you'll bring them down towards hip height. Hands will be like you are in downward facing dog, fingers spread apart. The knees can be bent in this pose. And what you want to do is come into a relatively flat back onto your spine. Shoulders are staying connected onto your back, making sure not to sink down in through your shoulders. And then from here now, pressing in towards the wall with your hands, and then widening through your pelvic floor, your sit bones, so that you're getting a length pushing into the wall, but also extending back. Holding this for a few breaths and trying to get your heart and your chest to soften down towards the floor. It's an excellent pose to help open up your tight shoulders and back. Next pose we're gonna do, thanks Jesse, is come up. I call this stick em up pose at the wall. It's not a very traditional pose. You're gonna come with your feet towards the wall. Some people find it more comfortable to have them a little bit out and then bring your hands into a stick em up pose onto the wall. Now, depending on your flexibility, you may want to stay here, maybe even widen your hands out to the side. Oh, that's okay. And then from here, come back up. Or if you're more mobile, start to bring your hands up towards touching your fingertips on your back. If your elbows come off the wall, if your shoulders come off the wall, if your hands come off the wall, that's too much. And so bring your arms down. And this is one you want to do for about five or six breaths. Inhale, bringing your arms up. Exhale, bringing your hands back down towards the wall. Good, come on away from there for a second. The next one we're gonna do is a bound forward lunge. So for this one, you're gonna to wanna to come a little bit away from the wall and step your feet a little bit wider than hip width, maybe towards the edges of the mat. Interlace your fingers behind your back. And now in this one, it's important, notice the way Jesse's got his shoulders pointing back rather than coming forward onto your back here. Good, keeping your elbows slightly bent. On an inhale breath, lift up through your chest and spine and then fold your body forward to about a 90 degree angle. If you're tight in the hamstrings, you wanna bend your knees a lot in this pose. Push your hips back. On the inhales, focus more on an axial or lengthening stretch through your spine. On the exhales, you can let yourself bow slightly more forward towards the floor. So that's inhale, lengthening forward a little more. And then exhale when you bow forward, making sure not to bulge up around into your low back. Awesome pose for stretching your hamstrings, but also your chest and shoulders. That's great, and you can come on back up from here. The next pose we're gonna do is a side plank at the wall. So for this one, you're gonna to wanna to come to the wall and place your right hand onto the wall, about shoulder height. Fingers are spread apart. If you're really tight in the shoulders, you're gonna to wanna to turn your hand just ever so slightly back. Now from here, walk your feet so they're a little closer together and turn them a little more to away from the wall. Press your hand into the wall and then start to lift through your heart and chest and twist towards the center of the room that you're in. One of the things that's really important in side plank at the wall is to make sure that you keep your shoulder blade rooting back. So as you twist towards the center of the room, notice if your wall shoulder wants to start coming forward in what I call a high fashion model shoulder. We wanna do the opposite and keep it rooted back in towards your spine so that you're lengthening all through your chest, pec muscles and pressing in towards the wall. There's a couple variations you can do here with your arms. You can either lift your left arm up and just reach it straight out towards the side. Or the one that I like to stretch in towards my throat and chest is to simply take your hand and place it on the back of your head, where if you were a ponytail kind of person, you'd lean into it and then lean back into your hand and open up through the neck and chest, all the while pressing into the hand and into the wall. And then obviously you're gonna to wanna to do this pose on the opposite side and you can come back out. The final pose that we're gonna do is a downward facing dog onto your mat. So you're gonna come down onto your hands and knees. The most supported variation is called puppy pose. For this one, you're just gonna keep your hands onto the floor. Notice how Jesse's got his crease of his wrist parallel towards the front of his mat. He's got his fingers spread apart. Puppy pose, you're pushing your hips back and working to bring your chest down towards the floor. So you wanna just extend your hips back and root down. You may even wanna bring his hands forward a little bit for this if that feels more opening. Good. Or you can come right up into full downward facing dog, Jesse, which you can do anytime. The important parts of downward facing dog 
are to make sure that your low back is not bulging or rounding up, which if that's happening for you, it is much better to have your knees bent than it is to have your legs straight and your back rounding. There's another pose where you want to extend through your spine in two opposite directions. And eventually you want to soften your heart and chest down towards the floor, making sure not to collapse at the crease of your shoulders. That's great. And then come on down onto your knees. Sequencing through those five poses over and over again, it's a great way to open up through your chest and shoulders and release any of the tension that you might have from riding on your bike.